I am flummoxed, flabbergasted, astonished, and bewildered. I did not expect I need to do a breakdown of episode 297 in which Deliverance Minister and Faith Healer Kathy DeGraw decrees and commands the curse of lactose intolerance to be healed from her viewers. It's a beautiful day. Got my Bible. I'm ready to go. I want to speak to those of you who are lactose intolerant. I have had so many of you asking me, Kathy, would you please do a prayer for lactose intolerance? So in the name of Jesus, I come against lactose intolerance right now in Jesus name. I speak and decree that your digestive system receives and processes dairy properly in the name of Jesus Christ. No bloating, no diarrhea, no upset stomach in the name of Jesus Christ. I command your body to have chemical balance in processing food, your digestive tract to work normally, your stomach, gallbladder, liver, colon, intestines in the name of Jesus Christ. I break this curse off of you and I speak and decree Jesus's healing over you. Friends, keep believing, praying and listening to this reel and be healed. Nope. <laughs> now, I thought the issue was obvious, but the comments, especially on Instagram and TikTok, are atrocious, with people who either see nothing wrong or completely agree, apparently so desensitized to word of faith malarkey that you can't tell the difference between prayer and incantation. I mean, I'm sorry for cussing, but you're a bunch of silly gooses. Let me lay out the issues. First, this is not prayer. Though she calls this a prayer, no prayer actually takes place. It is a pseudo-authoritative rant in which the word I is used eight times. I come against lactose intolerance, I speak and decree, I command your body, I break this curse, I speak and decree. Where's the prayer? There is no supplication here. This isn't how Jesus taught us to pray. I want to speak to gluten allergies and insensitivities right now. I command your body to align with the word of God. I command your stomach, your intestines, and your colon to receive food properly and release it properly. I command inflammation in your body to go, and I command all gluten intolerances to be healed. I speak and decree that by Jesus' stripes, you are healed. Friends, drop a comment, I'm healed, share and follow. The second issue is the doctrine beneath the surface. Now, what a lot of viewers might not understand is that Kathy believes she has the authority to heal on command in the name of Jesus on the condition of faith. She must have faith to decree and declare, and you must also have faith to be healed. If you don't get healed, it's due to your lack of faith, because according to Word of Faith doctrine, it is always God's will that you be healed. This involves two errors. First, a misunderstanding of texts like Isaiah 53.5 by his stripes we are healed. They believe that physical healing was purchased for all Christians in the atonement, and the way to access this is with the sufficient amount of required faith. But Isaiah 53.5 is about breaking and reversing the curse of sin through the sacrificial sufferings of Christ, not the curse of lactose intolerance. One day we will be physically healed of all ailments in glory, and God may be pleased to heal physically now by his power and according to his sovereign will and in response to the prayers of his people. But to suggest that the death of Christ means that you must harness enough faith to be healed from basically anything because physical healing was purchased for you and it's just up to your faith to reach out and take it is grave error. Which leads us to the second error in the doctrine beneath the surface. In this theology, faith becomes Becomes a force that we use to basically get whatever we want. For other word of faith preachers like Kenneth Copeland or Benny Hinn or Joyce Meyer, it's often about sowing money in faith to reap more money. And with Kathy, the focus seems to be on common bodily ailments. Let's attack those kidney stones right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak to your kidneys and I command them to produce a proper amount of waste. I command your calcium levels to be normal in Jesus Christ's name. I command all kidney stones to dissolve by the fire of God right now. Any spirit of infirmity attacking you in the name of Jesus Christ, I command it to go. I crush, crush crush kidney stones right now. And I say crush and pass out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Friends, you got to get up. You got to decree audibly. Years ago, my husband came running in my bedroom. We didn't know it. It was a kidney stone. I decreed. I declared out loud audibly that thing crushed. He went to the doctor a week later for a normal checkup. He agreed. He probably had one. Friends, get up, decree, declare, put something in the comments right now so I can stand in agreement with you in prayer. 
Now, the third primary issue is the assumption of authority. Dozens of commenters on my video said, I see nothing wrong with this. Jesus gave us the authority to heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. They are quoting from Matthew 10 and are assuming that Jesus' instructions there are for themselves. This is a classic case of a me-centered hermeneutic wherein I read myself into the story. But a simple look at the context reveals that this is a specific mission to a specific group of men. Jesus is speaking to his apostles and is sending them to the towns of Israel, specifically specifically instructing them to avoid the Gentiles because the miracles that they will perform are an announcement to the people of Israel that their Messiah and King has arrived. This was not authority and these are not instructions given to all Christians at all times. You do not have apostolic authority. But it seems that people will take their misunderstanding of Matthew 10 and read it into Matthew 28, 18 as if Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to you. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. That's not what he said. So there is a false assumption of authority wherein Kathy and others believe they can command healing. It's every mind-binding, tormenting spirit, I command it to go in Jesus' name. And I command the Holy Spirit to come in and fill. And I command the Holy Spirit. Here's the fourth primary issue. The vain use of the name of Jesus. Rather than prayer taking place in this video, the name of Jesus is used as the necessary ingredient in a pagan incantation in order to command and the desired result. This is, again, a misunderstanding of the scriptures. When Jesus says in John 14, 14, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it, he is not instructing us in the formulaic use of his name to achieve our desired ends as Kathy does in this video. Instead, he was offering his disciples, whom he was about to leave, the comforting principle that we may approach God through him, and to the extent that our prayer aligns with God's will, it shall be granted. This verse is about the doing of his will, not our will. Sometimes we do not get the desired answer to our prayers because it's not God's will. Perhaps there is a better answer that we haven't even thought to ask for. Perhaps the Lord knows that it is better for us that the answer be no. But to take the precious name of our Lord Jesus and use it as a tool to bend God to our will is to blaspheme him. In conclusion, this is the kind of theology that leads to people being told that their loved one died because they didn't have enough faith. Don't receive it. No, don't receive it. Don't receive that bad report. It is not your destiny. I had to go to the doctor recently and the doctor said, maybe God is giving this to you to test you, to try you. You know, why has he healed you from other things and he's not healing you of this? You know, maybe it's something God wants you to live with. Basically, he was saying, and I'm like, no, right to his face. I'm like, no, I am not going to receive that report. My God is bigger than this. And so just say, no, I'm not going to buy it. I'm not buying this. The word of God says, by Christ's stripes, I'm healed. Don't receive that report. It is wicked. It may be God's will for you to suffer, to be afflicted all your days so that God may use that affliction to achieve his righteous purposes in you. And if you're someone who is suffering from a painful bodily ailment, allow me to point you to 2 Corinthians 12 and Paul's thorn in the flesh. Whether you think this was a physical ailment or not, Paul was certainly a man of faith who prayed to God through Jesus that this affliction be removed. And you know, by referring to asking God for it to be removed three times, he's likely referring to a dream drawn out season of intense fasting and prayer. If it's always God's will to heal, why didn't he heal Paul? Did Paul not have enough faith? No, there were righteous, sovereign purposes for why the Lord allowed his suffering to continue. And the Lord says to him, My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. If you have come out of seasons of affliction, or if you find yourself currently in a painful season, or if you have a perpetual bodily ailment that the Lord has not yet healed you of, I hope and pray that you are able to say with the psalmist in Psalm 119.71, It is good for me that I was afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. I believe in praying for healing, and this episode is a mockery of that, and that's why it's a holy no. Nope. Mm -mm. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign.